Okay. Here is a signal injector that is very simple to build. And I built it inside of a small basketball pump. You know, one's used to pumping up air into a basketball pump. I had this in my room and I think it got broke somehow. So I took part the top part of it off and everything else all out of it. Then this one had a plastic tip on it. So I so I so I could push the capa output capacitor lead, the DC blocking capacitor lead out through the tip. If it doesn't, if it's metal, you can probably put the wire between the threads of the plastic threads on the case and twist it on there with the wire and with it. It'll hold it on there. It'll probably work as well. There's also a metal ball that was in there. You had to poke out and get in the way. That was hard to do. Anyway, it works. You can see in the telescope there, we got, we got a square way, which is what you should get. As you can see, it is one at 1.5 kilohertz. I'm going to be making another one that's going to want 1.5 hertz just in case I want to go a lot less. 1.5 hertz will probably be okay. Something that, that, that's not faster than the speed of light. It's powered by this power supply here. This is uh, what I made. And it has it's a dual supply. It has a positive and negative voltage on there. But it's in the ground. We're just using only one of it. Out of the whole thing, five volts. I'm thinking, maybe a little bit of above five volts. You can find one that's staying up to like 14 volts, but don't go higher than that. Because if you're using quarter watt resistors of one kilo, it's gonna fire. It's gonna get hotter than that. You see, show you in here. There's show you inside there. I have this, the black wire. Is that's what I use to clip onto the thing, uh, the ground uh, of the the thing I want to inject to the white and red wires, the power supply wires. Oops, did I just do something? Oh, I just picked up. Maybe I just shut off. Pick up noise. Oh yeah. Here we go. Perfect. Much better. Anyway, I hooked up to my cell phone, and since my cell phone has a, since the cell phone telescope software has a built-in frequency counter, it told me that it was like a thousand and four hundred hertz, so it has close to one kilohertz. Probably off because of the tolerance ranges and also the load of of the the collector resistors and also the the filter the DC blocking capacitor here's what it looks like just very simple and easy 1k there 1k on both collectors so both collectors get 1k then the, then, then the other two resistors the, that go to the two bases of 4.7k then you cut the capacitor to the positive uh well i didn't the ones i'm using are non-polarized so they so that's why i have it on i think you want to put positive on the base or you guys you can, if you look up the thing on the internet you can probably find out how to wire it up if you use electrolytics or anything like that that requires polarization and it can't be wired in a certain way they're using 100 nanofarads for each one that that's an, and I did this off a of, based off of a tutorial site that had a table tell me if I picked the oh, two resistors be this and two capacitors be this tell me what frequency I got it and I decided 1.5 kilohertz is a good frequency it's not too slow, not too slow, and not too fast. It's in the middle. Probably want to go a little less than that. 
This capacitor here can be, be between 10 amphere to, to uh, 10 microfarad. It can probably go higher than that. Then if you don't want to go too high, when you load it up, it will get uh, a too big of a load on it. You don't want to go too tiny where, it, where it's too much resistance. Anyway, that's pretty much it. You, you people can use this for radio stuff, or fixing radios, or in case if you if the radio's uh, amplifier safety is acting up, you need to figure out where it is. Where it's losing, maybe, maybe losing its signal. Hat you can probe it and then see, see if you can hear it coming out of the speaker. Or if you need to inject a signal into it. Why is this place? There's a, there, there, there's, you, you can even make one that's in slowness. In fact, this can be, actually be, be two separate ones. <laughs> if you wanted one that, that has one polarity on it. So let's say that this was switched on where it's switched on positive here. The other one over here is be negative. And then when it goes, this goes positive, that would be negative. You go back and forth. And and so basically, what I did did, did is I had these 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 old type of film capacitors, the axle ones. Axle meaning like it's like a resistor. Let's show it to you. The the leads on both sides, as you see, and it's just like a resistor has. But most of them have. But it's not a resistor, it's a capacitor. It's an old type of film ones. You find them at West Florida Components. Or or somewhere like that. They make it, they'll make they make it a lot easier than if you had to put a radical on the original ones. They'll usually put a book one downwards. Because if you have to shove one up to through the tip of there, it's going to be hard. You might have to put a wire on it. So, but if these here, these make it simpler because they're straight, they're pointing straight out. Anyway, and it doesn't work. Next, next time I'm going to build one that does it at 1.5 hertz instead. So it's like one times yeah. per second it'll be going on and off. Thanks for watching. Hope you like it.